Hello, my name is Christopher DeLay. I'm a premier field engineer for Microsoft Services. The purpose of this video is to uh, give instructions on how you can upgrade your PKI from um, specifically in this uh, training series we're going to cover from Windows Server 2003 to Windows Server 2012. Um, these videos, are, so I'm going to have a couple training videos on the whole upgrade process. They're going to uh, I'll be limited to 15 minutes a piece because I'm going to be making these available through YouTube and there is of course a, a 15 minute limit to uh, YouTube videos if you're not a partner so this will be broken up into a couple different videos but they uh, will all be uh, available um, off of YouTube and I'll have links to these um, from my uh, blog site. So this is the agenda. Um, we'll be covering uh, kind of an intro, kind of give a some background talk about the upgrade process, and then um, we'll talk about get into more details in the upgrade process, which is uh, essentially you know a backup and restore process in terms of migrating from 2003 to 2012. So these training sessions will cover upgrading Windows Server 2003 certification authorities to Windows Server 2012. So the demos I will actually be doing will be uh, upgrading Windows Server 2003. Um, these same steps, though, would work for upgrading Windows Server 2008 or Windows Server 2008 R2 to Windows Server 2012. The steps used for the upgrade process will be a migration. So um, the most effective way I've found to upgrade cer certification authorities um, from one OS version to another is to do a migration. So that migration process essentially is a, a backup and restore process. There are some, especially for enterprise CAs, there are some additional steps, but just kind of keep, uh, just kind of think of it as a, a backup and restore process. And um, this will allow you to upgrade, you know, between the different OS versions and even between architectures. So sometimes the concern there is that, hey, I'm upgrading from Windows 2003 um, which is 32-bit, and uh, I want to upgrade to 2012, which is 64-bit, or are there going to be any issues with that? And, you know, there are no issues um, migrating between um, architecture versions of the OS. The steps that I will cover for upgrading is for a two-tier PKI. So in my example, I will have an offline root uh, certification authority, and I will have an online um, issuing CA, which will be an enterprise CA. So I'll cover backing up and restoring both the root CA and issuing CA, which is the migration process, and then what the other additional steps that are um, necessary for having a successful migration. Um, there are some items that I won't necessarily be covering, so the core of this is to just talk about upgrading the CAs. Um, I won't be talking about migrating, uh, like um, completing uh, security configurations or hardening procedures after the migration. Um, I also won't include, you know, more advanced topics. So if you have some more, uh, more advanced scenarios, there may be some additional planning and considerations that you need to think about. But the goal here is just to kind of talk about upgrading and um, migrating these um, root and issuing CAs. So we'll get started here in a second. The only other considerations you may have, if you do use HSMs, hardware security modules, um, there's some additional steps, of course, you would have to take the, uh, there to perform the migration. Typically things like installing the HSM software on the uh, machines that are going to become the new CAs, creating your security world on those CAs, and all those sort of steps. Those are not included in this the demo that I'm going to be doing. Again, this is just a straightforward um, upgrade of a, a root and issuing CA. So backing up the root certification authority. So again, this whole migration process is uh, basically a backup and restore process. So the steps involved are you're going to have to go ahead and back up your existing root CA. Um, you're also going to have to set up a new CA. So well, it's not really a new CA, but a new machine. So you have to go install Windows Server 2012 on another machine, whether that's you know hardware or physical machine or whatever the case may be. And then you would basically go through and install the CA on that new machine um, with uh, the keys from the backup and then restore the database and log files and configuration. So that's pretty much the process. 
So in order to you know, successfully complete this process, you first need to back up these components. Now there are ways to automate this backup, so there are potentially scripts you can run. Um, I may touch on those. Um, as far as the demo I'm going to be giving, I'm going to be doing it all kind of manually to sort of give a better understanding of the process. So again, um, in order to successfully do the migration, you'll need to back up the CA certificates and keys. You also need to back up the CA database and log files, and then you also need to back up the CA configuration. Something you also have to keep in mind um, during this process is if you do have scripts or um, ta scheduled tasks or things like that that you run to do some sort of maintenance on the CAs, um, you'll have to figure out a way to bring those over. I'm not going to cover this in the video, I'm just mainly focusing on the upgrade of the certification authorities themselves. So a root CA backup demo. So the root CA is pretty straightforward. So I'm going to go here into my virtual environment and I'm going to bring up my uh, virtual offline root CA. So I have my CA up here. Um, so what I did is on the C drive I created a backup folder and in this backup folder I created a CA backup folder and a config backup folder. So the CA backup folder will end up having um, a backup of the uh, CA certificate, some private keys, and the database and log files. And in this config backup folder, I'll end up having a backup of the configuration of the CA, which is in the registry. So to back up the certificates, uh, private keys, and database um, is a pretty straightforward process. So if you go into your certification authority console, you're just going to right click and do all tasks, backup CA, click next here, select the private key and CA certificate, and then select certificate database and certificate database log files. So now I'm going to browse to my um, backup folder that I created earlier, so my CA backup folder, click OK, click next. I'm going to enter a password. This password is used to um, protect the PFX file, so the CA certificates and private keys are going to be stored in a PFX file, and the private key prevents um, someone from access, someone who shouldn't have access to the private key accessing that uh, key material. So I'm going to go ahead and put in my password. Click next, and then finish to complete that backup. So it's pretty straightforward. If you look at my CA, this is, a, this is a test environment, so there's not a whole lot of stuff in my CA. So I really only have one issued certificate, which is for my subordinate CA. Um, you, you know, if, you, if your root CA has been for a while, you may have a couple more certificates, but regardless, root CAs usually don't have a whole lot of data. So if I look at my C backup folder, I will see that I have the database and log files in the database folder and that I have the PFX file on here that contains the CA certificate and private key. So the next step I need to do is I need to go ahead and back up the registry. So I'll just go simply go into regedit here. I'm going to expand out HKey local machine system current control set services and then cert service and then configuration and then I'm um, actually a lot of um, a lot of articles will tell you to bring over this whole configuration folder um, there's really not a whole lot of data that I see that I really need in here so I'm just gonna expand this out and bring over the f the uh, the key here that says fourth coffee root certification authority which is the name of my root CA. So I'm just going to right click on this, do export. I'm going to browse to my uh, config backup folder which is again on the C drive. And I'm just going to name it config backup. Okay, so now if I go here I should have the copy of the database and log files in my CA backup folder and I should have a backup of the registry in, um, in the config backup folder. 
So like I said, you're also going to need a, a 2012 machine set up to get ready to install the um, Active Directory Certificate Services and to restore from backup. So you're going to want to set that up. You're going to basically want to set up a Windows uh, Server 2012 machine and you're going to want to go ahead and give that the same name as your um, quote unquote old CA. So here I have my new CA all set up. Go ahead and log on. <coughs> so we'll go ahead and give that a second to get started here. Now if I click on configure this local server, you'll see that I've already done some configuration here. So I've given the same name as my previous CA and so I have that set up. So the next next step I'm going to need to do is actually go through and install the ADCS binaries. So to do that I'm going to do manage, add roles and features. Then I'm just going to select next, uh, role based or feature based installation. Um, I'm selecting this machine because this is the actual machine that I'm going to be installing the ADCS binaries on. So I click next. Uh, I'm going to select Active Directory Certificate Services and I do want to install the uh, management tools as well so um, that's already checked for me so I click Add Features Next Next and Next and now it's going to ask me which role services I want to install since this is a root CA there aren't many role services running under on this machine so it's just going to be the certification authority service itself running on this machine so I'm going to go ahead and click next and uh, then go ahead and click install so this will go ahead and install the ADCS binaries it will not complete the installation of Active Directory certificate services um, there are PowerShell scripts that you can use to um, install um, Active Directory Certificate Services. So let's just kind of take a look at some of our our, webs, our web resources here. So my blog is located here, blogs.technet.com slash b slash x.509. I've done a bunch of blogs on Windows Server 2012 and implementing uh, PKI based on Windows Server 2012. So there are some there's definitely um, PowerShell commandlets to install um, Active Directory Certificate Services. So, um, if you want to go to this, go to my blog. I'll give you some background information. Um, there's also online um, some references to using the actual PowerShell commandlets themselves. As far as the backup, um, I told you the backup can be automated. So, um, if you just do a search for PKI blogs. Uh, disaster. This will take you to the uh, Windows PKI blog if you click on this first link. And this is a blog posting by my colleague Amr. And um, this is a pretty good blog posting covering dis disaster recovery. It talks a lot about disaster recovery in the process. Um, but what he also has in here is a script that you can use to back up your CAs. So for a uh, root CA, um, this right here um, manipulates some folders on the local system and then this will go ahead and back up the CA cert private key and database and also protect the PFX file with this password so if you were to use this you would obviously want to change the password um, if you wanted to obfuscate the password a little bit more you might want to you know compile this into a XE file um, because obviously being a script it's going to be clear text and easily uh, readable. 
In this next line we'll go ahead and back up the uh, registry configuration. This next line here will back up the um, CSP that's being used. And this will also get backed up in the registry configuration. You only really need this information if you're using an HSM and you need to identify what CSP that you're going to need to um, do the install under. But if you're not using an HSM, like, there's really no scenario where you would really need this information. Um, and this last line is going to, you're not necessarily going to need it for the root CA. This line will just uh, make a, uh, create a work, create a, a text file that has a list of uh, certificate templates that are available on the CA. So that's one way you can automate it. So now I went through, um, I installed the ADCS binaries. You'll now see that if I click um, where this warning symbol is, it'll tell me, um, well, let me just click close to that. If I click here, it'll tell me that there's post deployment configuration. So there are steps that I need to go through and actually do to actually install Active Directory Certificate Services. So this completes the first video in the series. So what I've done is I've backed up the root CA, I've backed up um, the CA cert private keys, database log files and configuration. I've logged on to the machine that's become my new CA. I showed you that the machine name I made the same and I installed the ADCS binaries. So the next step for me to do is actually copy the backup that I've taken to my old CA and copy it to this machine and then actually go through and do the um, installation and restore of Active Directory Certificate Services. So that's it for this time. Um, there will be a video right after this that will cover the steps for actually going through and um, finishing the migration for the root CA. Alright, thank you.